so blessed to be here. I'm so thankful to Brother Williams and the committee for extending unto us this opportunity to stand before you and to preach Christ and Christ crucified. I want to thank all of the brethren who labor tirelessly here at this congregation and the congregations across the, the area who thought it not robbery to uh, de de deliver their efforts to putting on such a magnificent lectureship. And like I say, we're just blessed to be a part of this lectureship. Also want to thank the sisters who, who work so hard back in the kitchen uh, preparing and serving the food. God bless you. We got our spiritual food this morning, our physical food this in, in, the, around the noon time, and now we're getting more spiritual food in the afternoon. The topic that's been assigned to me is uh, the precedence of obedience. The precedence of obedience, obeying God over man. And I like the idea of going back to the book uh, of Acts. It reminds me, the other day my wife and I were, uh, were in a dollar store. And, uh, you know, one of the things about a dollar store, it might have that title on the store that it's a dollar store. But sometimes when you go inside the store, you find that many of the products inside the store cost so much more than a dollar. And it seems to me that if you're going to put the name dollar store on top of the building, then everything in the store needs to be a dollar. See, what I'm saying is that just because a building has the name Christ on it does not make it the true church of Christ. As a matter of fact, sometimes you might find buildings with the phrase church of Christ on it, but just because it says church of Christ on it, that doesn't mean it's the true church of Christ. So I believe that's why it's important to go back to the book of Acts and to figure out why we do what we do. If it's written in the Bible, then we can teach it. If we cannot find it in the word of God, then we need to stay away from it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Acts chapter 5 verse 25. The Bible says, Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence. For they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. I believe to be able to appreciate the extent of this pericope of scripture that we're assigned, I feel that it's essential to go back and see what was occurring in the midst of the context. Uh, back in Acts chapter 1, even to begin there, we have the ascension of Christ, the promise of, by Christ of the Holy Spirit, and we have the choosing of the new apostle, not the Judas hanged himself. In Acts chapter 2, we have the, the coming of the Holy Spirit of, upon those apostles. We have the first gospel sermon being preached by Peter. We have over 3,000 souls being saved and the Lord continuing to add to the church of Christ. In Acts chapter 3, you got Peter and John and lay, uh, healing a lame man. And then Peter preached a sermon after all the people in the synagogue saw what was going on and wondered about what had occurred. In Acts chapter 4, the apostles suffered persecution. They were arrested, so therefore Peter stood up and gave another sermon uh, to the Sanhedrin. In Acts chapter 5, you have internal conflict within the church to start that chapter off with Ananias and Sapphira. And then after that, you have more persecution. And then we move forward to our pericope of scripture where the Sadducees were going against 
the apostles' teaching. So to start at verse number 17, the Holy Spirit leads Luke to write, Then the high priest rose up, and all that were with him, and the Holy Spirit led him to put, which is the sect of the Sadducees. That, that, those words right there are very important, but we'll come back to that in a few minutes. And were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. So therefore you have the apostles after teaching the truth of the gospel, they were arrested and thrown into prison. So then you have the Sanhedrin and all the priests coming against the teaching of the apostles. The book tells us, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words. By the way, he didn't say some of the words. He didn't say only the words that you wanted to teach. Only the words that tickled people's ears. He said all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety and the keeper standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they, would, they doubted of them whereunto these would grow. So notice what happened. The, 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 the priest, uh, uh, on, on the, on the uh, 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 encouragement of the Sadducees, had the apostles arrested. So the apostles were arrested and committed into prison. However, the Lord sent an angel to bail them out of prison. The Bible tells us that although there was nobody no longer in the prison, the door was still shut. As a matter of fact, the prison was still locked. Not only was the prison still locked, it tells us that the safety mechanisms were still in place. That kind of reminds me, when you go back to Daniel, you hear the story of uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How they got thrown into that fiery furnace, and the Bible tells us that somebody else was there too. Tells us that one appeared as if it were a son of a god and, and when they got out they noticed that it wasn't even a hair on their head that had been singed so we have these apostles in prison here but the angel of the lord got them out all right, all right. why was it so important for luke to tell us in verse 17 that the sadducees which is of the sect of the sadducees so when Assessing the, the potential reason of why the Holy Spirit led Luke to tell the audience that the sect of the Sadducees were behind this, yes, then we have to understand who the Sadducees were. Mm -hmm. Now you remember in the first century, you, you or even before then, you had many groups that had appeared. You had the Pharisees and the Essenes and the Zealots you also had the Sadducees who were one of the more conservative groups. This group, unlike the Pharisees who, who believed in uh, the, the, the Torah, the Pentateuch, as well as the entire Hebrew Bible, the, the Pharisees also believed in a resurrection. They also believed in old tradition. They equated old tradition with the written law. However, the Sadducees went even more beyond that, and they were much more conservative than the Pharisees. The Sadducees said that we're only going to accept what's written in the Pentateuch, the Torah, the, the first five books of the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament. But not only that, the Sadducees did not believe in a resurrection. 
But get this. The Pharisees did not believe in angels. So follow me. Watch, watch what's going on here. See, the reason why the Sadducees were after the apostles were because the apostles were teaching what? The resurrection. The apostles were stepping out there and started telling people that Christ whom you crucified has been resurrected from the dead. So therefore what they were doing were challenging the authority of the Sadducees. But notice what God did. Get this. Notice what he did back in verse number 19. But the angel... Didn't I just say that the Sadducees didn't even believe in angels? So wait a minute. The Sadducees had the apostles committed for teaching something that they did not believe. However, something that they did not believe had the apostles taken out. Oh, do y'all see what I'm saying here? See, that's the reason why we obey God and not man, because with God, there are things in existence that you might not be able to understand, but if God says it's going to happen, then that's exactly what's going to happen. You have man today who wants to depend on science. Man today depends on imperialism. They say, well, if I can't touch it, taste it, smell it, hear it, or see it, then it must not exist but think about what happened here in this pericope of scripture you had apostles committed to prison and by a force that nobody could explain they were released from prison so just imagine those guards being sent by the court just imagine how they must have felt well I, I, I get up and do what I'm told it's just business as usual. I'm approaching the prison so I could go and get these apostles and bring them back to who they need to talk to. But when I get there, I find out something that I thought I'd never seen. The prison doors were still locked, but it wasn't anybody in the prison. As a matter of fact, the people that I just knew I put in the prison just a little while back are now standing in the temple teaching the people. So notice what was going on. Something was happening that they just could not explain. Why is that so important? Because just a few, uh, 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 just a little while back, something happened that nobody could explain. And what was that? The resurrection of Christ Jesus. Nobody could explain the event, but it was in God's plan all along. So therefore, the Sadducees need to come to recognize it's not about what I see. It's not about what I feel. It's all about what God is doing. I heard somebody say a while back, well, God said it, I'll believe it, then that settles it. Well, I'm here to tell you, I don't even know if that's true. What's true is that when God said it, that settled it, whether I believed it or not. And that's how it is with the word of God. Why obey God? Because God exercised power that man cannot even explain. Verse 25, then came one and told them, those men you put in prison, now they stand and teaching of the people. So the captain went, the officers brought them without violence. They feared the people as they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. How priest and asked, didn't we tell y'all to stop teaching? And they didn't even want to say Jesus' name. They didn't even want to say his name. To stop teaching in this name? Notice back in Acts chapter 4, they had just told the apostles, don't y'all be running around here spreading this teaching. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But they should have heard what the apostles said back in Acts chapter 4, verse 18 through 20. Watch what they said. They already told him one time. 
The apostles say, look, and they called them, commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen. So they had already told them once, although you're trying to shut our mouths, yes, we're going to tell it anyway. Yes, so they must not believe them because they called them back. What well, didn't we tell you? So they had to tell them almost the same thing. Well, who do you think we're going to obey, God or you? We live in a time today that man is trying to do anything and everything to go against the word of God. But it's up to us as members of the body of Christ and as ministers of his word to obey God and not man. Man might try to hush our mouths. Man might tell us, well, stop preaching that you might have some elders back at your own congregation tell you, well, you need to quit preaching that because people are leaving. But the question I have, well, is it in the Bible? If it's in the Bible, we got to preach it no matter what man say. We live in a time today of get a, go along to get along. I don't care what the government got to say about it. If the laws of man conflict with the laws of God, then we got to go with God every single time. And as children of God, we must learn to grow to that point because man is going astray. You see it in denominations. You see it in many places who call themselves non-denominational as well. Is when people meet together to do what they call worship. They're not meeting to worship God. Instead, what they're doing is meeting to entertain their own selves. Now think about that. Every time you see worship in the Bible, the idea behind it is giving to God. In other words, no matter what type of worship, there, there, there's pure worship and true worship, God is always the object of worship. In other words, he is the audience. But whenever we start meeting to entertain ourselves, look what's happening. We become the audience. But the fact is, whenever we come become the audience, what we're doing is putting ourselves in the place of God. God, the Bible teaches, is a jealous God. And today you have men putting themselves in the place of God. Can I bring it home? Even in the body of Christ. I say even in the body of Christ. You have men who are standing in pulpits scared to preach the right doctrine. Men standing in pulpit who telling people what? They want to hear because they're not concerned about the truth of the doctrine. They're concerned about how much money is in their bank account. If they're scared to preach the doctrine, then they need to go sit down somewhere because the Bible, God tells us there's always somebody who's going to be willing to tell it. Is that going to be us? Brothers and sisters, because we're all called to witness the resurrection of the Christ. We're all called to tell people about the word of God. But are we scared to tell? This is why we obey God and not man. God prepares a way out, a way that man can even explain. So therefore, we learn that we obey God and not man. If I'm getting directions from somebody on how to go to New York, it might be two people to give me direction. One might say, well, I pulled it up online, and here's what you need to do. You travel this way and go, you do all that. But then someone else might come to me and, who never pulled up any kind of directions online. But they might say, well, here's how you go. The reason I'm telling you here's how you go 
is because I've been there before. Well, well. Who I'm going to go with? I would rather go with the one who's been before. Nobody has left heaven and come to earth and gone back to heaven. But Jesus Christ himself. So why do we put man in place of God and many people would rather obey man when it comes to our soul salvation? We need to be trying to obey Christ because he's the only one who's been before. That's the reason why we obey God and not man. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Parker going to help us get back on schedule. <laughs> we'll have a verse of another song, and our next speaker, uh, I don't need no introduction of who he is. He grew up in my house. <laughs> and if truth be told, uh, the discipline that we uh, performed on him had he reported it I might just be getting out of jail by now <laughs> but our next speaker